The AI rally appears to have taken a breather so far this week. Plenty of tech stocks are near to all-time highs, and it includes Amazon and SAP, and both shares up about 20% on the year. The two companies are collaborating to give businesses more generative AI tools in the cloud. There has, however, been some skepticism about artificial intelligence in the workplace. The Nobel-winning economist Paul Romer said last week he doubts that AI will greatly increase productivity. I suspect, with great respect, Christian Klein, the chief executive of SAP, uh, might say it slightly differently. Uh, Christian is with me in Orlando. Uh, and at the same time, I guess you don't want to get into a pissing match with a, with a, a Nobel economist. So, in that scenario, do you see strong productivity gains from AI? I mean, yeah, first of all, thanks for having me, Richard. And when you could see the energy here on the show floors here in Orlando at the Sapphire conference, you could see the excitement around generative AI and our product portfolio. When you imagine, Richard, we are 300 million end users are working our solution each and every day for document management, for HR, for finance, for supply chain. And these 300 million end users will have in the future a co-pilot tool which will take over 80% of their activities. So there will be a massive productivity gain for these 300 million users. Where do you stand on this dispute you have heard me talking about earlier? You've got the open letter from OpenAI, which is basically asking for whistleblower protections. At the same time, you have the company saying there are plenty of protections that are there. Now, if you are going to be developing AI with Amazon and others, you are, in a sense, facing the same issue, although from a different standpoint. So where do you stand on giving whistleblower protections? Yeah, so, Richard, really good question. For us, it's very important to also deliver responsible AI uh, to the point you are raising. And so what does responsible AI mean for us at SAP? First, we have 40,000 customers sharing with us their data based on a consent. So they agree that we can use their data in an anonymized, in an encrypted way to train the modules, to train our generative AI use cases, which we are embedding into the business processes of our customers. Second, we really want to make sure that the data is secure. So if there are certain sovereign cloud requirements in the US, in the UK, in Australia, we are serving for that. So that we, the customer always knows where the data does reside and who is touching the data. So that is for us very important to deliver responsible AI. Responsible AI also requires you to be responsible in the way you develop it. Um, obviously, okay. you're very concerned of what happens with your customers and your consumers, if you will. But at a societal level, um, Christian, yeah. where's your responsibility there? Uh, good question, Richard. And actually, for us, it's very important to help with our technology to help the world run better and improve people's lives. And we really take this mission to our heart. And so what we are doing is, when we are, for example, embedded, embedding generative AI into our procurement solutions, we really screening also the World Wide Web to say, hey, what kind of suppliers can only not only deliver at best cost or best quality? Is there any supplier in your supply chain who is also actually harming human rights? And so right. to take this supplier out of the supply chain, if you look at HR and the recruiting space, we really want to make sure that we are using and embedding AI so there is non-bias in your recruiting machine. So that's for us very important to also do good for the society and not only deliver, you know, higher productivity or accelerated revenue growth. Well. Between zero and 100, where do you yeah. think we are on the AI scale of development at the moment? Zero being we're not even out the front door, 100, we're there. Where do you think we are? Richard, it's, it's hard to generalize. Yeah, when you look at what we announced today with NVIDIA and Jensen was here at Sapphire, what we announced is tool for developer and tool for consultants. So what we are doing is we have 6 million people in our ecosystem and we are giving them now a generative AI-based developer tool in their hand where they can auto-generate auto code. 
where they can configure systems, design business processes to run a company more effective. I mean, this is massive. So from a scale from zero to 100, I would say this is 70. In other parts, maybe we are at 50, but we are definitely on the move. And this technology has a lot of impact on businesses. Very grateful to have you with us. Always good to have you, Christian. Thank you very much indeed for joining us tonight from Orlando in Florida.